These splicing videos are intended to show the techniques involved in splicing Samson high-performance ropes. Some repetitive sequences have been edited for time. Watch the video to become familiar with the individual steps of the splice. When performing the splice, follow Samson's written instructions for the step-by-step -step procedure. Written instructions at samsonrope.com. This splice procedure has been developed and tested for use with Samson Class II products only. Class II ropes are produced with high modulus fibers, HMPE, Aramid, LCP, or PBO. These fibers are often referred to by their trade names, Dyneema, Technora, Vectrin, and Xylon. The end for end splice is used to join the ends of a section of rope to form an endless loop or a grommet, or when removing a damaged section from a rope to join two remaining sections into a single piece. This splice may be performed on either new or used rope, and by following the procedure shown, can retain 90-100% to of new rope strength. Instructions for this splice can be downloaded as an Acrobat PDF file from SamsonRope.com and are also available in print form in the Samson Splicing Manual. Eight strand ropes, also known as plated or square braid ropes, are composed of eight strands grouped into four pairs. Two of these pairs turn to the left and two pairs turn to the right. The written instructions refer to gray and white strands. Here, we are marking the similar strand pairs for easy identification. From the end of the rope, count 16 picks and make mark 1. Mark the second end of the rope the same way. Apply a tight wrap of tape at both marks. Now, working from the end of the rope, mark all the strands that rotate to the left up to the tape and for five more picks beyond the tape. Notice that there are two pairs of strands that rotate to the left. They will be directly opposite each other in the rope. Both pairs need to be marked. The marks need to be clearly visible. These marked strands are analogous to the gray pairs in the written instructions. Make certain that you turn the rope over so both pairs of left hand strands are marked. Remove any tape at the end of the rope. Tape the end of each of the eight strands individually. With the ends taped, unbraid the strand pairs all the way back to the tape at mark one. Keep the pairs of strands together while unbraiding. Now untwist each strand pair so the two strands lie parallel to each other, rather than twisting around each other.
keep the strand pairs together. Tape the ends of each pair together. Repeat for each of the four strand pairs. This procedure, counting crowns, applying tape to mark 16 picks, taping the individual strand ends, unlaying the strands to the twine, untwisting and taping the ends of the strand pairs together is identical for the other end to be spliced. Both ends to be spliced together must be prepared before proceeding. Arrange both the rope ends and the strand pairs as shown here. The gray strand pairs in the illustration are the pairs that have been marked. Strands from the other end of the rope, the rope seen on the left side of the picture, should be arranged to mirror this arrangement. We're now ready to join the pairs and marry the ropes. It is important to follow these instructions carefully. Note that the marked strands are in the middle of the arrangement. Join the left marked pair closest to the splicer by passing it between the marked pair on the right. The other marked pair on the right is passed through the marked pair on the left. The unmarked strand pair on the left, closest to the splicer, is passed through the unmarked pair on the right. For the last unmarked pair at the top, the right unmarked pair is passed through the unmarked pair on the left. Make certain the pairs are not twisted as they are joined, and keep the joined pairs in the same relative position. With all four of the strand pairs joined, marry the ropes by carefully drawing the ropes together by pulling the strand pairs in opposite directions. Work slowly and carefully, keeping the joined strand pairs in the same position relative to each other. Bring the two rope ends together until the crossover point is snug. The tape at both marks 1 should be close to each other, but not at the same point. Remove any twists found as the ropes are married. All the strands should be straight through the crossover point. Tie the crossover point securely with twine. Remove the tape applied at both marks 1. We're now ready to begin the first round of tucks. Just as in the eye splice, the marked pairs will be tucked under unmarked pairs and the unmarked pairs will be tucked under marked pairs. Begin with the unmarked pair at the top of the crossover point. Tuck it under the marked pair closest to the twine tied at the crossover. Pull the strand pair completely through, making certain the strands don't twist in the process. The strands of most 8-strand ropes are easily loosened to allow the tucks to proceed, but if necessary, use a fid or marlin spike to open the braid. Now tuck the marked pair at the top under unmarked pairs. Notice that the strand pairs follow like strand pairs down the length of the braid. The second marked pair is now tucked under the unmarked pair on the opposite side of the rope. If it's easier, turn the rope over to make certain it is properly routed.
Now, tuck the remaining unmarked pair under the marked pair on the opposite side of the rope. The first round of tucks with all four strand pairs on one end of the rope is now complete. Perform the same procedure on the opposite side of the marriage point. Marked strands tucked under unmarked strands and unmarked strands tucked under marked strands until the first round of tucks on both sides of the marriage point is complete. Pull all strands up snug on both sides of the marriage point. Remove the twine at the marriage point. Pull all the strands up snug. Check for any strands that are twisted before beginning the next round of tucks. At this point, with a round of tucks made in each direction from the crossover point, the splice can proceed in either direction until all tucks have been completed on that side. Again, notice that the strand pairs follow like strand pairs down the length of the braid. The tuck strands will rotate around the rope, tucked once on the top followed by a tuck on the opposite side or bottom of the braid. Continue tucking the strands, marked under unmarked pairs and unmarked under marked pairs, until six full tucks with all four strand pairs have been completed. After each round of tucks with all four pairs, pull each strand to ensure they are snug and there is no twist in the pairs. With the first six tucks completed, the splice should now appear as shown here. Now, separate the strand pairs. Remove the strand closest to the crossover in each of the four strand pairs. Continue the tucks with the remaining single strands in the same pattern. Marked strands under unmarked strands and unmarked strands under marked strands for three more full tucks. Taper the splice once more by reducing the strand volume by half. Count half the yarns in each strand and separate from the strand. Tuck the remaining reduced strands under three full tucks. From the crossover, the splice proceeds in the same manner in the opposite direction. Complete six full tucks with the strand pairs, remove the strand closest to the crossover, and complete three more tucks with the remaining strands. Reduce the volume of the remaining three strands by half and tuck three more times. 
All the strand tails are now taped and cut off. Leave the tails long enough so they won't be pulled into the rope when a load is applied. About the length of one or two tucks is adequate. The splice is now complete. The finished splice should look like this, all tucks following the original lay of the rope. 